I'm Sylvia Okfor. I'm a program manager on the Office Add-ins Developer Experience team. And I'm here to talk to you about modernizing the Visual Studio templates. So taking a step back, the goal of the Developer Experience team is to help developers be successful building Office add-ins using modern tools and frameworks. Now, that doesn't mean that we will support all frameworks in existence. We've tried this. We tried it a couple years ago. Um, we had samples across the different frameworks available. And we noticed that a year later, they were out of date, and they, um, we just didn't have the bandwidth to keep up with all the different frameworks. So we've pivoted a little bit, and we decided that we will start by going deep on a few of the frameworks that will reach and impact the most amount of people. So what does that mean for Visual Studio? In Visual Studio today, we support .NET Framework and Fabric.js. We will continue to support that because I think that's one of our core scenarios. Now what we're looking into is how do we fit into the .NET core story? So if you're a .NET developer, you're aware that there's been a lot of buzz around .NET core. And so we took a step back and said, okay, what's our story here? How do we start building off of the momentum? So we've kind of put together, and what I'll be demoing today is a template that leverages .NET Core and Fabric React. And our goal is that this is kind of the first step in, in modernizing our Visual Studio templates and supporting more developers who are in Visual Studio. Um, it is a journey, so we would love your feedback. We would love you to get involved in the discussion and help make, sh make sure that we're going after the right frameworks and building the right experience for you. But today we are starting with this. We are starting with .NET Core and Fabric React. So I will hop right into demo actually. So today um, this sample is in our PMP repo. It's live today so you can go and try it after the call or whenever works for you. There are a few prerequisites. The first is Visual Studio 2019. Um, you can be an update three or newer. So if you're in the preview version of Visual Studio, you're fine. If you are in the non-preview version, make sure that you have update three. And then um, you need to have the following components installed. So you need the .NET component, the Node.js component, Office and SharePoint, as well as the Net Core 2.2 runtime. Once you have those and Node.js installed on your machine, Getting started is pretty much similar to how you get started with add-ins today. You're going to open Visual Studio, click Create New Project, search Excel, and then make sure that you're creating the web add-in, not the VSTO add-in. From here, you can call it whatever you want, and then make sure you select add new functionalities to Excel, not the insert content into spreadsheet. So that will start creating the template. And then to add .NET Core and Fabric React, you actually need to clone the PMP repo. And so if you open a command prompt, go to where you want to create your project, and then type in git clone and the URL. And that will download the, the project onto your local drive. And you want to make sure that you download it onto the same local drive that Visual Studio created your project. So for me, it's easy. I only have one drive. They all get downloaded to the same place. But if you're using multiple drives, like a C drive and a D drive, make sure that you're um, installing both projects to the same place. So all right, my add-in has been created. So from here, this is the original add-in that is in Visual Studio today. To add the .NET Core and React piece, you want to right-click the solution, go down to Add, and then Add Existing Project. Then you want to navigate to where you downloaded the PNP repo. So for me, it was in Downloads. You can see it right here. I go to Samples. Here's the .NET Core React. Um, choose the language that you are more comfortable with. I'm comfortable with TypeScript, so I'm gonna choose that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and include the project. So you can see the project was included here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and build this now so it can be installed and then be integrated with the original add-in. 
And actually, I will pause right here just to call out something that you may notice. So this is the original web add-in project. You can see the structure here below. The new .NET Core React has a slightly different structure. And so where you'll find the code is in this client app folder. If you expand public, you'll see the um, task pane styling as well as the task pane code. And then in source, you will see the index.csx file. And in components, you'll see the app.csx file. And this is where most of your JavaScript code will end up going. So you can see the default, we always change the color of the range to yellow. And so that code lives in the app.tsx. All right. So I think my project has finished building. Let me double check. Yes, that looks right. So what you're going to do next is you're going to link both your .NET Core and React template and your add-in manifest. So to do that, you want to go to Excel Web Add-in 5 or whatever your project was called. And you'll see down here in the Properties pane, Web Project. So here, you want to change this to your .NET Core and React template. Do you want to associate? Yes, we do. We want to link the two together. And that will update the manifest and do a couple other linkings. Then the final step in this to link the two projects is to go into your manifest, copy this ID, and then you want to update the manifest in your ASP.NET Core templates. So if I go here, you can see the same ID. Make sure you change that. And then you're actually going to take this whole manifest and replace your old one. So let me flip back one more time. Here we go. Just control A, replace the whole thing, save. And that is the last step, but your add-in should now be a .NET Core and React add-in. So to launch it, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit F5. Here we go. And you'll see Excel is going to load. It's loading the add-ins. We're still working on some of the performance here, now using .NET Core, and how do we optimize this to be as fast as um, the previous templates. So that is something that we're aware of and are continuing to work on. So I'll just give it a second. There it goes. Awesome. OK, so add-in loaded successfully. You'll see the Show Task Pane button. Again, we're aware of the performance. This is something we're still working on, but awesome, cool. It loaded. If I select a range here, I hit run. It changes to yellow. If I go back to Visual Studio, um, to my Solution Explorer and my uh, app.tsx file, here we go. I can actually change this to, let's say, 1D green. Go ahead and do that. Open Excel again, open Excel again, change, and you can see it's up to date. And this is using, that's pretty much it. This is using .NET Core um, and React. As you still get the same functionality with Office JS. There are a few extra steps because this is still in preview and something that we wanted to test out and make sure that it's a project type that people would want and use. And honestly, this is where you guys come in. So let me switch back to the presentation here. Okay, cool, perfect. So like I mentioned in the beginning, this is a journey, this is a conversation. We would love your feedback and love for you to get involved. If you're a .NET developer and have opinions or things that you wanna see in the experience, please come talk to us. And so these are kind of our two action items. Go try out the .NET Core and React template that's in the PNP repo. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know what you think and how it works for you. And then if you have additional opinions or additional feedback that you want to give us, sign up for an interview and come, come talk to us about how you use .NET with Office add-ins and what you expect to see and what, we, what you would like to see from the platform. That's pretty much it for me. Thank you.